Welcome to the online educational training at the Nutrient Cycling, Soil Health, and Food Safety Conference on Hidden Pitfalls of Compost Manure Application Equipment. Hello, my name is John Rachi. I'm the Director of Product Development for New Leader Manufacturing. I've been working for New Leader for over 20 years in service, sales, manufacturing, and also product development. New Leader Manufacturing is a family-owned and operated manufacturing company located in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. New Leader has a very strong name in the nutrient application equipment business, which started back in 1939. New Leader Manufacturing is the market leader and product innovator for fertilizer, lime, and compost application equipment. Today, I'm going to discuss the industry challenges facing agricultural, livestock, and poultry industries. As, we, we, as we've experienced over the last few years, that window of time to apply Nutrients has been shrinking as farmers grow larger, trying to cover more acres in less time. Also, in some areas, early snow or late thaws reduce the amount of time to spread nutrients on the ground. Increasing government regulations in some states have now mandated that nitrogen products or even manure cannot be spread in the fall of the year or on frozen ground. This creates increasing challenges to you, the farmers and custom applicators, to get all those acres spread in the spring of the year. Labor shortages also continue to be an increasing challenge for many farmers and businesses to find qualified help to run application equipment or even their general farm equipment. The result of these industries challenges is trying to do more with less. This makes it very important to have the equipment that lets you meet these challenges and maintain your productivity and increase your profitability. Today I will cover some of the pitfalls that I have seen over my 20 years of composted application equipment. So first of all, as I mentioned, farmers are trying to cover more in less time. So when you're trying to put too much material through a spreader and trying to beat the rush, with limited throughput capabilities of the machine, sometimes the spinners can actually slow down and not maintain their speed. What does that really lead to? Inconsistent spread patterns and poor spread patterns and inconsistent widths. To maintain acceptable spread patterns and avoid streaking fields, applicators with low hydraulic output machines don't generally have to slow down or reduce their width, which in turn drastically limits your productivity slash profitability. By limiting your productivity, you're increasing your input cost and increasing your cost per acre. This leads to lower profitability and success at the end of the year. So my pro tip to you is this. When purchasing compost manure application equipment, ask about hydraulic flow and throughput capabilities. This would indicate how fast I can apply material and at what widths and rates. Ask for documentation or examples of products that you are trying to apply, not just generalities. You will find that every machine is created equally and many times cheaper will not always lead to profitable bottom line. Pitfall number two I'd like to discuss is machines with fixed features and no options. I've found over my 20 years that machines must be configured to meet your specific needs. One size or style does not fit all. So let's talk about some of the things that vary. So product density can change from one load to the next. Spreaders with fixed features like a fixed feed gate don't allow operators to adjust spreader parameters to accommodate the density of the product or really the rate they're trying to apply. Look for machines that can be adjusted for multiple types of product application. Fixed feed gates can also lead to hydraulic failure. Improper feed gate height can lead to hydraulic spikes in the pressure or pulsing of material coming off of the conveyor. So what do I mean by that? So if you have a high rate of material and you're running too high a feed gate, the material will actually slab onto the spinners and make that hydraulic system pulse, really reducing the life of the, the hydraulic components. Pulsing that product on the spinners also leads to a poor spread pattern. Spinner speed is the next thing I would like to discuss. Spinner speed 
uh, is very important to uh, leading to wide and accurate patterns. Many machines use manual valves on the spinner circuit, which do not adjust for the common things, which is cold oil or different loads onto the spinners. These spinners will slow down and speed up, resulting in uneven patterns. Look for a machine that has automatic adjustment and monitoring of the spinner circuit. That means you're gonna plug in a spinner speed, it's gonna monitor those spinners to make sure they're at that and adjust if they're not, no matter what the oil is or what the, uh, the output is. They're maintained and they're very consistent. A lot of the times you can get them within five to 10 RPM of each other. Material placement on those spinner discs is key to uniformity of the spread pattern. Not every material has the same density or consistency, and we will spread different. As a purchaser of this equipment, look for a machine that the spinner assembly or the divider can be adjusted uh, for fine tuning of your spread pattern and provide uniform spread patterns. Another feature that is extremely important is infield calibration. Due to the varying densities of products that I'm seeing now, uh, machines can now be equipped with scales to monitor the load and also adjust the calibration in the field. This feature ensures proper rate application and eliminates shortages or having extra when you get to the end of the field. That's not really what you want. So my pro tip to you on this, again, I stress to all of you to look for equipment with adjustable features. Do not get locked into something that has a low price tag that may do the job, but not handle everything you're looking for in your nutrient application. Some of these machines now have the capability to even spread fertilizer as a compost machine or some light rates of, uh, I have seen some light rates align, but a lot of those machines aren't recommended for it. But think about that for a multi-purpose machine. Pitfall number three is outdated technology in the face of increasing government regulations. I cannot stress to you enough, the government regulations are coming and they are not gonna stop. Increasing government regulations are putting pressure on the fertilizer, compost, and manure application industries. Environmental concerns are starting to um, dictate when and where uh, compost can be applied, shrinking application windows, and putting more requirements on how nutrients are being applied. Producers and applicators need to be able to meet these changing regulations while still maintaining their productivity and profitability. Composted manure spreaders um, with outdated technology can hurt your bottom line if they're not capable of meeting the demands or these changing regulations, and you might have to upgrade in the future. And that's not what you wanna be doing. So precise application is important in all parties. Uh, to all parties. Placing the material uniformity across the pattern will eliminate your hot spots, streaking in the field, and provide the exact amount of nutrients you're trying to apply. Consistency is the key to the su success, so understanding the output style of the machine and ensuring precise placement of nutrients. One big thing is variable rate technology. We see it a lot in placing the exact amount of nutrients to feed the crops without waste. We see that in fertilizer. So when looking for that application spreader, understand its capabilities for spreading fields with given prescriptions of nutrient needs. I see this coming in the compost industry. Make sure the control system on the spreader is equipped to accept prescription files and has the control valves on the conveyor to vary the rate and output of the material being prescribed. If variable rate is not in your near future, Please keep in mind that government regulations are requiring in some areas that you record where, when, what was the application, what was the product, what were the weather conditions, when you spread your fields. When you're purchasing your next machine, make sure the control system is capable of recording these applied maps. So my pro tip to you is look for the equipment with the newer technology. Does it have variable rate technology? Can it record your as applied maps? These issues will only become more important as the years go on. My last pitfall I'm gonna cover is manufacturers who cut corners and use low quality materials at high corrosion in your high wear areas. So your initial purchase price is a very important factor in buying equipment, but more often than not, ongoing maintenance cost will define success 
season after season. Maybe a 10% savings on the initial purchase can evaporate in a single season or two season with down equipment or worn out equipment, or maybe it didn't hit your needs. So when buying your equipment, make sure you look at the high corrosion areas and the high wear areas. What material are they made of? How thick is it? Is that gonna wear for me? So the first area I'd like to discuss is the floor panel. That's a panel underneath the conveyor chain. Many manufacturers build this area out of carbon steel and a thin material, which could de de deteriorate over a period of time and rust out. Some manufacturers will actually provide a three or four stainless steel floor panel. This floor panel will not rust or create or corrode in, the, in these rough environments. In many instances, the 304 panel also becomes very shiny and, and sticky material will not build up under the conveyor chain. Buildup results in two things. It can cause poor application rates and also reduce the life of the, the conveyor. Another option you may consider is a polyline floor under there. That also is an option that can help eliminate that sticky material and build up and uh, stress on your conveyor chain. So the conveyor chain itself is very important to look at. You wanna make sure you're at least getting a D677K spec for strength and power to pull that material out. The last thing you want is your chain to break. So keep that in mind. Also look for the thickness of the bars. Thickness of the bars is important. It's used as a pulling device to pull material out, but it's also for strength of that chain. There are different chain styles that we, we can use. There is a number three chain, which is really a, a bar on every length. And that chain is really designed for small uh, granular products, uh, drier materials at lower rates. It can spread high rates also. It's like a walking floor. The next chain, which is pretty standard in compost is the number two chain. A number two is actually a chain link, a bar welded to every other chain link. So it allows a gap in there for material to drop down between the, the bars and pull out. We have seen some number one chains uh, sold in this industry. Um, that's where it's a chain link, two strands, and then another bar. So what that does is allows more material to sit down in between, but I usually see that in extremely sticky conditions. Other working areas are the spinner discs. The spinner discs, the thickness of those is key. They need to be thick. They need to be robust because sometimes your compost has hidden, hidden things in it that can bend these discs or frozen chunks. Um, you want it definitely thicker disc or better. Also the amount of fins. If you have four fins compared to six fins, six pins fins will take higher flows of material because it's taking smaller bites with less pressure. Also those fins themselves, make sure that you're looking at them for the loft. Are they lofting that material up in the wind to catch it, or are they trying to shoot it out to pierce the wind? Some fins are even 304 stainless steel, which eliminate uh, buildup, and it also, uh, also keeps that uh, fin shiny when those machines are setting out for superior patterns. So fin disc combinations lead to the life expectancy and pattern you're desiring. All these factors play a large role in your success at the end of the season. So my pro tip to you is, Quality material and high corrosion and wear areas pays off in the long run. Don't get blinded by the sticker price alone. Buy quality. So my next thing that I want to do is cover a couple case studies. The case studies that I have today are talking um, about two different case studies. It's a five ton rate of compost and a three ton rate of compost. Both of these case studies assume 10,000 acres are being spread and but if you ever want to discuss smaller acres and payoffs, just let us know. We can be contacted at, uh, at New Leader and we'd love to discuss those with you. The two slides though really show the financial difference between high throughput and a low throughput machine and what it means to an operation. So a couple assumptions to, uh, to note. Again, this is 10,000 acres, a five ton rate. An operator that has a salary of 50,000 uh, $3.07 uh, diesel, 55% field efficiency. That means the amount of time that you're actually spreading in the field. So 55% of the time the machine is running. 10 hour workdays and overhead, which is benefits, taxes, travel, et cetera. These can all be adjusted and we have 
formulators to calculate this. So the first example is a five ton rate. It's a high throughput machine that we're, we're gonna compare to a low throughput. So the high throughput machine can spread 55 feet at five tons at 16 mile an hour. That's hard to believe, but you could cover 587 acres in a day with a 10 hour day. So let's compare that to a low throughput machine. Maybe they can only spread 35 feet at six mile an hour. They can only cover 140 acres per day. So think about this. With that high throughput machine, you could save 54 days, save $32,000. So to me as a, a farmer or a custom applicator, I would love to buy that high throughput machine because 54 days, this $32,000 saved is just in fuel, labor, and overhead. That doesn't give me my opportunity cost of what else I could be doing. The next one is a 10,000 acre three ton rate. These high throughput machines can spread that at 55 feet or at 16 mile an hour for 683 acres per day. We did change this efficiency to 65 because you will be in the field a little bit longer with the lower rate. The low throughput machines are only 40 foot uh, at 12 mile an hour. We did give them a little bit more because with the lower rate, they could put a little more out. So they get 370 acres per day. So we just saved you 12 days and $7,000 that does not include opportunity costs. So please keep in mind there are benefits to having these high throughput machines. So again, thank you for your time. Um, the agricultural and livestock and poultry industries are under a great deal of pressure to increase these productivities and maximize efficiencies and improve profit margins. Not all composted manure spreaders are created equal and depending on the needs of your operation, some spreaders can really hurt your bottom line, like low throughput capabilities, low quality material, and fixed features. We hope this presentation helped you understand some of the key machine components to look at when buying a spreader. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to any member of our team. We can be found at www.newleader.com. Thanks again.